Welcome back to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We'll take you through the front pages of the national dailies and bring you up to speed with what's making the rounds. And we have G.D. Johnson on standby who will join the conversation. I'd like to start off with the daily independent uh, newspaper this morning. And let's look at the board caption. On the daily independent, fear envelopes Anambra as Guba poll holds tomorrow. Uh, that's the bold caption, and you can actually tell that this will be dominating all of the headlines. Secure our people. Southeast governors tell security agencies. Don't panic over influx of, influx of buses full of passengers. That's what government is saying. INEC begins distribution of sensitive materials. All of this you find on the front page of uh, the Daily Independent Invasion of justice or delays residents, NBA frowns and rejects federal government's denial, insists on unmasking and prosecution of those who directed the raid. All of that on page four. Uh, you also find the governor of Lagos State, Sean Lu inaugurates tribunal to probe Ikoyu building collapse, declares three days mourning and flags to fly at half mast. Body of Fokker's home MD recovered that's also on page two and uh still looking at the front page of the daily independent newspaper another bold caption here says nas tackles amechi over 1.3 billion dollars kanu maradi rail projects lawmakers insist federal government marginalizing southeast and south south all of that you also find on uh, the Daily Independent newspaper this morning. And Southeast insecurity no longer making of IPOP. That's what region's governors quoted to say. Uh, the governors are saying, oh, yes, it's not just IPOP, but some element are already taking advantage of it and uh, uh, tagging IPOP for all of the mayhem they're causing. Uni Abuja lecturers boycott classes over abducted colleagues. And ASU gives 48 hours to security agencies to rescue abductees, that's on page seven. IPOP cancels once week sit at home order, that's also on page seven. Debt cancellation not channeled appropriately, that's what the president is quoted to say. And just before we move away, weak obsolete equipment hampering power transmission. The minister is also saying that on page two of the Daily Independent newspaper. Uh, if you pick up a copy, I'm sure you get uh, all of the details. On the nation newspapers, Body of collapsed Lagos building owner retrieved. Death toll rises to 33. Families register 19 missing persons. Also, Okonkwo, Soludo, Uba, Ozibo pledge peaceful Anambra poll. We can also find here court orders the FCC to pay man 5 million naira for declaring him wanted. Still on the nation, Anambra 2021, IPOB, we didn't order one week sit at home. NBC wants against scary broadcast, and INEC begins distribution of sensitive materials. APC orders warring or, or, or your groups to reconcile. And also 360,000 download e Naira's speed wallet app. A few others this morning, 5G operators reject $1.97 million spectrum fee. Those are the big ones on the Nation newspapers this morning. All right, away from the Nation newspaper, let's check out the leadership newspaper and the board caption reads, Finance Ministry budgets 130.5 billion naira for special interventions in 2022. Uh, that's a board caption, quite different from what you have on uh, all the papers. You also have, as Workers Ministry allocate 2.3 billion naira for construction of classrooms, CSOs raise concern over votes for non-specific projects and infrastructure. That's also uh, the writer underneath the board caption. Uni Abuja attack, where traumatized can't go to class. That's what Asu is saying. Anambra poll, please ban vehicular movement. IPOP cancel sit at home order. That's also on page four. And technocrats to shut down labs. Reset center over 22 billion era and allowance uh, at a time where COVID, uh, you know, 19 is uh, a problem globally and also in Nigeria. Body of Lagos Collapse Building Owner, Femi Oshibano, recovered. That's also on page one of the leadership. Uh, that's the much we can take on the leadership newspaper this morning. And out of the Daily Trust, I regret giving birth to Shakao, says his mother. 
he was stubborn, district head says. Also on the Daily Trust, OPEC raises Nigeria's oil production bar to 1.666 uh, uh, million barrels per day. And also, uh, Ikoi building collapse, owner's body recovered three days after. MTN Group to sell 575 million shares to Nigerian investors. COVID-19, PSC, Health Ministry, clash over 1.2 billion Naira treatment fund. And Nigerians trapped in net of bad governance and insecurity, says Atiko Abubakar. And Embra governorship, IPOB backtracks, asks residents to vote, council's sit-at-home order. Good morning, Ginny Johnson. Thanks for joining us. Well, uh, good morning and good morning to our viewers all over the world. All right. I, I, I want us to start with the Anambra elections and the IPOBs sit at home. I'm mentioning this because it's not the first time that this has happened. Last time that, w that there were general elections in Anambra, the IPOB had the same approach with which they declare sit at home, declare no elections, you know, say no to voting and whatnot. And then 48 hours to the election, uh -huh. they then give a go-ahead for people to vote. Um, th the reason I'm mentioning yes, this is because I've seen people put out the narrative that this seems to be done on purpose to dissuade people from getting registered for the election in the first place, getting their, their PVCs and whatnot. Um, and then eventually, you know, they now say, okay, go ahead and vote when they already know 48 hours to the election that nobody you know, would be registered to vote or nobody would be interested in the, in the electoral process. Um, so l let me get your view That's on what? this story that says IPOB cancels sit at home. That's voter suppression. That's voter suppression strategy. And it's not helping people in Alhambra State. We check the um, voters turnout for the last election in 2017. It was, it was just 22%. Of the registered voter, so 22 percent people actually determine who was the governor of Anambra State. And in a situation whereby you are, if the student should score 22 percent, are you going to grade the student as being successful as being a failure? And that's why we have had um, leadership failure in Nigeria because the voters' turnout is not always impressive, and that's not the intention and the idea behind those that came up with representative democracy. At least you expect to get about 50 60 percent threshold in terms of voters the voters turnout and in that process like you pointed out it, it might it might be to help one political party or the other and the process is people from going out to vote coupled with the fact that we have already stoked fear fear in the minds of the people and the, our election that is also characterized by a military siege mentality apart from the confusion that IPOB has created. If you see the way we mobilize security agencies, 33,000 policemen, um, 18 police commissioner, two DIGs, plus the military plus, you see too well, that will not stop those that want to commit the various activities of voters intimidation, of vote buying, of ballot bus snatching, to still not commit it. You will not be able to reconcile the outcome uh, the actual election taking place and the security agencies that were deployed to address this issue. I think we need to address all of these elements. And those that are um, the characters, the non-state actors in IPO, should understand that they are not helping the citizens of Anambra State, they are not helping the citizens of the Southeast when they come up with sit at home or that, which stifled the economic well-being of people. You see, time is a, is a compatible resource that God has given to every to everybody, whether you are poor, you are rich. And it's how you deploy that time that determines how successful, that determines your well-being. Let me just see that. So if 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 you order sit at home for people that are met, that are engaged in commercial activity, you have destroyed their life. You have taken a means of their livelihood. And whoever is advising ICOP needs to advise them that whatever strategy they are adopting to promote their agitation, a destructive strategy, strategy that are not only destroying the people, is destroying the community, is destroying the southeast, and is also destroying the perception that the generality of Nigerians have concerning concerning their their their, their goals and their aspiration and the reason why their agitation, and as a result of that, 
perception and perception is stronger than reality so in, in invariably the eyes that people will see type of will be in in negative in negative light we are so happy that eventually people will go out to exercise their mandate tomorrow to vote for the governor that they want to to be to be to be to be their governor if you if 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 you check the voters turnout generally in Nigeria, it has always been poor. Now we had this issue to it. It will definitely be poor, and then um, it will be the government of minority. I've all, I've always defined democracy as the government of the minority, perpetuated by the stupidity of the majority, who refuse to go out and vote on the day of the election. In, in 2019, only less than 16 million people voted for the president. So 16 million Nigerians. And imposed their will on us because majority of us refuse to go out and vote. In Ekiti State, in Ocean State, you have a situation whereby people that have voted for the governor in 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 in, the, in, in Ekiti State, for example, they are not up to they are not up to two hundred fifty thousand. So two hundred fifty thousand will determine what happens in the state. So we need to look at ways of doing voters education, voters mobilization, and ensuring that people actually participate in democracy. The majority. The political class is their style and their strategy. They, they do voter suppression because they know if people come out to vote, it's easier to rig an election where you didn't have to come out to vote. And that's and that's the goal of all of this voter suppression strategy. And we are happy that the election will be taking place. And in South, I want to link that to, to a story, um, another story where the governor, South East insecurity, no longer making up hype up. That's what the region governor has said, that South is security. And I recall sharing this with some colleagues. I remember some of my colleagues, friends, um, went for the NUJ conference in Maya, and they came back giving the report that, oh, when we, went, we met over 50 checkpoints, and then you are at point, you actually to disembark from the car, you walk a distance before you enter the car, the, the buses and the cars will be checked. And then you wonder if you have 50 checkpoints, the people fomenting trouble in Inu, fomenting trouble in Anambra, fomenting trouble in the southeast. How do they travel to get to these places? Are they spirit? Are they human beings? Are people making money out of these security issues and security challenges that we are having in, in this country? Because you, you see that people will just come and they will set ablaze police stations. They will attack formations. They will attack communities. And you wonder what is the level of intelligence gathering and what is the what is the response? The response of the security agencies that we have. Are people ma making money out of the misfortunes of Nigeria in order to justify the resources that are allocated to, to security votes and more resources that are spent on security votes? It's becoming clearer and clearer by the day. And I recall somebody giving a report concerning going to Anambra and saying that, you know what, Anambra is on that seat. You can't go out. There are a lot of roadblocks and the rest of it. And then some people will still carry guns and attack different places. Are they spirit? Are they are they spirit that can be seen? Or they are dropping from heaven and, or, or hell or the pit of hell that people can't can see them. And if the governors are coming to saying this, they should provide us with evidence. Enough of enough of grandstanding, enough of enough of political statement. We should be bold enough to 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 to, to identify and to name and shame. We must have a name and shame strategy to name and shame people that are trying to foment trouble in this country. Until we do that, we will not have, um, All right. have so any meaningful development. I want to link this story with the NAS. I, I just give me this opportunity. With NAS tackling Amechi over 1.3 billion um, Kano Maradi Rail project, and the Southeast and the South South lawmakers protesting. Are they, are they just waking up now? What is the essence? Now, the lawmaker are meant, they have, they, have, they, have, they have the power over the post. It is the money that the legislature approves, that it appropriates, that the executive can spend. Now, what are the lawmakers been doing? I ask this question, what is the significance? What is the economic importance of constructing? What is the trade, uh, uh, the trade significance? What contribution would a railway project from, from Kano to Maradi due to Nigerian economy compared to a rail project, for example, from Calabar to Lagos, from Calabar to Abuja, from Port to Abuja, from Port to Lagos, or from, from Makodi, Benue State, which happens to be the food basket of the nation, down 
to Lagos. What 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 significance would that have done? That we have to waste resources to construct great projects for for they didn't raise that question and now they are not playing to the gallery saying oh, South is marginalized. They are not serious. They don't know what they are elected to to to, to do in the first instance. And even the Minister of Transport is from the South. It's from the southeast, and when the election comes around, all of this issue will come into 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 focus. Okay, uh, let's also um, get your thoughts on uh, the fact that the Lagos State Governor uh, has uh, inaugurated a tribunal to probe the Koyi building collapse. Despite the back and forth with yes, it was approved. No, it was fifteen, and then it was twenty-one. And uh, the fact that we have lost. What lives, has do you think anything would, you know, positive but, would come out of, you know, that? What has happened to the NSAS panel? The NSAS panel, you set up in Nigeria. When you set up a panel, you set a tribunal panel of inquiry and the rest of it. Um, what, what what happens to it? Um, you know, before we came on here, you guys were talking about how the search and rescue um, effort stopped because the, the builder, um, body was 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 recovered. You see, the the, the 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 challenge we have in this country, we have a nature approach. When uh, if you see when you have a country whereby you have people don't have respect for their laws, you have big manism. In a situation whereby you have big manism, when you give civil servants responsibility to come, to carry out their responsibility, and then you give order from the top that they should allow those people to go to release. I saw. I saw a clip on 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 a on a TV station, an online TV station, where a report was given where this character was arrested and then he was released the same day. He was resisting arrest and he was released the same day because there was an order of the thought for another from 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 from, from above. It is a country that has no no respect. Is would that be the only building? The building that collapsed in Lagos Island. We have a series of buildings collapsing in Lagos Island. Would would you Responsibility. The gas leakage that happened in Abuli, one Abuli Udua, what's the name of that Abuli? I have prosecuted people that we lost, we lost many lives. Uh, many lives were lost, and then the governor of Lagos took pictures to the president in Abuja to show him the pictures. What has happened to it? You see, government must allow, they must operate under the principle of rule of law. And the rule of law principle talks about equality before the law supremacy of the constitution fundamental human right the law is not respect of anybody that's why the, the insignia of of the law of the justice is a virgin that is blinded and is holding a skill is holding a skill so it's blind to your emotions it's blind to your feelings if you come before me you know it's a scale it's e you are treated equal and it is the person that has the, the right evidence that the judgment will tilt to his side so we must have those basic those those basic principles. Why would that building collapse? What led to that building collapse? Then if you check the structure of Koyi, why we grew up, high-rising buildings were not built around the Koyi. The, the type of structures we are seeing there, why they are the type of structures we have in the 60s, why are they, why are they the type of structures we have in the 70s, why are they the type of structures you have in the 80s. Now, the same thing is happening in Kaja Jari. It's happening in Kaja Jari. If you go to Kaja Jari, there are a lot of skyscrapers that have just came out of nowhere and the only Kaja Jari that happens to be a government residential area has turned to a commercial hub. The Ikoyu was not designed to be a commercial hub. It was designed to be a residential area. What has happened to government plan over the years? And it is these people that are setting up the panel. It is their friends that cheat and kin that breaks the law. They are the untouchable and they will set up panel. And then at the end of the day, someone said, if you don't want to get the result of anything, just set up a panel that the so that the panel will look at it. The one that collapsed in 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 in, in, in Lagos Island and various places. And there are buildings now that have challenges. What has government done to it? Even if you look at government projects itself, if you look at the roads that government construct, what is the when you look at the the, the I've said it some of the projects that our government do, they are dead traps. A lot of them have, have blood on their head. If you look at when they are constructing roads, they are constructing roads, they are constructing the drainage system. All you need to do is, you ask yourself the question, who is the supervising engineer, supervising this project? 
And if you ask questions, you raise questions concerning this. They will call you a troublemaker. They will call you this. They will name you. They will name, give you different different types of. Just go and look at even government projects, government projects, in terms of road construction. And you look at the number of inches that the asphalt will be. Some places you have three inches instead of nine, ten inches. And government will now set up set up one one pro panel to pro bro. What will be the outcome of it? It's a diversionary tactics. Is it? Is it? You know, it's pathetic because the way you people expressed it while you are before we came on set for this particular segment of this program is it's what is the value of an average Nigerian life? What's the value? Do you know how many? Do you know how many tankers on a ten dollar bridge on your way to Bega? Do you know how many tankers? And have they prosecuted those? Tankers that fell and they set people ablaze. And what has government done concerning concerning that? You go well, ask them. Go and look at the type of buses they used to carry people in Nigeria. And you see, you will see last month. You will see, you will see DIO. You will see federal road safety. They will not stop those rickety buses, and they will stop people driving their their private car. I ask you, and I'm challenging the governor. I'm challenging him. I'm challenging every one of them. Go and look at the buses that apply Lagos Road. Are those buses fit to carry human beings? Until we have a disaster, that's when they react. We have a reactionary government that they react to issues rather than rather than ensure that safety of people, lives, and property are complied with. And they will make political statement. And we do in our industry, we gloss over it and then we move on. Our emotion we pent up when this issue happened. I've spoken about this. When that on day. When Jack Conde was the governor, Jack Conde was the governor. That's why you have buses being painted yellow. Buses that were used to carry people in Lagos were neat buses. Now that's when they took those small, small buses. Why I was small, they call it the Kumagolo. Those small, 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 small buses they used. And all of a sudden, before you know it, those buses have littered the entire Lagos. It was not fit to carry people in 1979. Jack Conde ensured that those buses were taken away. 1979, and here we are in 2021. You have those buses literally the of Lagos, and those buses you carry eight, eight people, eight people, and then you wonder who approved, who is the who is the commissioner for transport that approved that nonsense to be in place? Who is the commissioner for housing that approved that nonsense? Who are those that are approving the type of structures we are having in Kuli? Is that the original plan for Kuli? Does the topography of Koikoi, can it cope with the type of structures we are putting in place? And then they will set up stupid plans. You waste lives and properties. You waste the life and destroy the lives of, 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 of people. And then you said you are setting up Jude one Johnson. useless panel. Jude Johnson, does, does this also make you... Two things I want to ask. Um, first one is, you know, does this also make you wonder um, how much worse this could have been if... This building was completed and fully inhabited with families and businesses and, and hundreds of people before this disaster happened. That's one. And then second is um, one of the things I was talking about earlier. We don't, we don't seem to be questioning the standard operating procedure for set and rescue in Nigeria in a disaster like this. There's, there doesn't seem to be anybody asking questions as to whether these, you know, the people carrying out the set and rescue are actually doing the right thing um, or carrying out a proper job. Our reporter mentioned that yesterday after, you know, the developer's body was found, work stopped for 30 minutes, 45 minutes, one hour, she's not even sure. But they stopped work because of the commotion around finding Femi Oshibona's body. Um, nobody seems to be asking questions with regards the SOP for search and rescue. Well, it's because if you have family members, then you should sue the government. You sue the government, you sue the agencies of government, you sue everybody. And then the government will have cause to pay compensation. And it's because we don't sue our government and we don't make government and we don't make government to pay compensation for the life. For example, if there is someone who's a family member that got trapped in that building and they lost his life and he sued the government for two billion naira and he approved the court. And that's why we are saying that the court needs to help the growth of democracy the sustenance of good governance in, in Nigeria. You see the state for two billion, and the state will have to cough out two billion out of out, 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 out of its scarce resources to pay those families, to pay the victims of the irresponsibility, the irresponsibility of government that is meant to protect them. Then I can assure you that um that we will see government doing diligence. Like you pointed out, 
thank God that um, families have not occupied that building. What do have been? Do have been? Well, after after one week, after one week, I can tell you, sir, the it will just be business as usual. We move on. We moved on with the gas leakage that killed many people somewhere in Abuja. I can't remember the name of that. It was towards them, um, but that we had this mode of that acts. We moved on. We moved on with those that got roasted on on Lagos Ibadan Expressway between Alausa and, and, and Bega. That or the dollar bridge. We keep moving on. We moved on with so even if people have inhabited that building and it's collapsed, there's no value for an average Nigerian life. That's the truth. There's no value. What value do we place on an average Nigerian? That's what I'm talking that's what I'm talking about to you about it. You need to go and visit some schools. You need to go and visit some schools. I can tell you, I on authoritatively, in twenty in twenty nine, in twenty eighteen, a school building collapsed. It was not reported. It collapsed in the state. It collapsed. It was not was it was it was it was it was, it was not reported. We have a situation where students are sitting on tire. It was those issues but all you need to do is just to go visit all of these things. Look at even public building itself. If you see the secretariat of some local government, when they are building new structures in their secretariat, all you just need to look at it is to look at it. This is a disaster waiting to happen. A society that has no respect for its law. Laws are basic principles. And if you don't have respect for principles, principles are no respecter of any man. You get the consequence of your actions or your inactions. It's, it's, it, that's that's just it. But imagine if this had happened. You know, earth will have rolled, people will have resigned, and then some people will have been arrested because this is this is this is homicide. All the people that, in fact, some will have lost their license to practice. They will have lost their license to practice. They will have lost their license to practice. It's it's it's. it's it, it's sad. It's sad. It's, 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 it's sad. Um, like a uh, mercy. May the Lord have mercy on us in Nigeria. That's just may the Lord have mercy. Just have mercy. Have mercy on us because you know it's, it's it's painful. And the fact that this has happened doesn't mean it's not going to happen again. In Nigeria, we pray and hope. Prayer and hope cannot prevent this because it's it's just a basic principle of life. What you sow, you will reap. If you if you build nonsense and even the 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 the, 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 the word of God give an illustration about building buildings. Someone built his house on sand on this on a sandy foundation. He said when the storm came and the, everything came, it washed it away. Those coastal lines are they prepared? Are they equipped for building those structures? Is that the original template for equipping? All right. Let's quickly and see if we can share your thoughts on. Is that yeah. All right, let's quickly see if we can show your thoughts on yeah, this well. uh, headline on the Daily Independent newspaper. Uh, it talks about the invasion of justice or Delhi's residents and the fact that the NBA is frowning at, uh, you know, government's action, government's denial and involvement. And they're asking that those who raided the house should be arrested and should be prosecuted. No, they are spirits. They came from nowhere. Uh, you, are, you, you see... It's, it's unfortunate that the judiciary has not asserted itself as an independent arm of government. Um, what what happens to one happens to all. And I've listened to to different comments from different people, and people tend to politicize issue. Um, and we have seen a pattern, a pattern of um, of arm twisting tactics. And this MBA Children and Foundation have called for the resignation of the Attorney General of the Federation. The houses of justice. This is not the first time that the houses of justice of the of 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 the Supreme Court have been have been invaded under Malami as the Attorney General. We have a situation whereby a seat was also leaked in the house of of the, of the former Chief Justice of the Federation. This is not democracy. This is not separation of power. This is sacrilegious. It's unbelievable. If that could be done for a justice of the Supreme Court. You can imagine what can be done to an to just an, an, an a citizen of the country. You don't treat your citizen, even a citizen, the way these things are, are, are being done. Nobody's asking questions. And someone asks, oh, is to check this. I ask people this. Do you know how this court system works? One one justice cannot one justice cannot take a decision alone. The Supreme Court works on the basis of consensus, consensus of opinion. 
among majority. So you have a situation whereby five, seven, or nine justices will sit on a particular case. And then if you are alleging that one is corrupt, is it possible for one judge justice to be corrupt and others not to be corrupt? Then is it possible that justices from the southern part of Nigeria are the justices that are corrupt? The justices from the northern part of Nigeria are not corrupt. You see, you begin to ask, you begin to ask this question that what is really going on? Even under military regime, we never had it this bad, and the NBA is frowning. They are not serious. They are not serious minded. They should have called for the resignation of the Attorney General of the Federation. Because under his watch, that's the chief law officer of the Federation to maintain the law. And the chief law officer of the Federation should not be the chief law breaker. And that's why people have said the office of the Minister of Justice and that of the Attorney General of the Federation should be separated in america you know they vote for the attorney general they vote in the state is at the is at the federal level that the president appoints and the moment the president appoints that office is insulated from all forms of politics but here we have situation whereby we have um the the even the attorney general has made statement that are sacrilegious that the mb should have asked the first thing that happened was the body of San to go and visit the, the Attorney General. I think that happened earlier this week to go and visit visit who they should call for his resignation. Can you imagine if she Ganifa were to be alive? Just imagine if Ganifa I mean, were to be were to be alive at this particular point in time in history for such a time as 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 as, as this. So that's that's that is it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate that we have gotten to where. They have gotten, if they could do it to the justice of the Supreme Court, what would they do to magistrate court judges? What would they wow. do to judges of high court? Do we know the kind of I'm, I'm, I'm twisting tactics that have been deployed against this, this the people that are meant to represent the temple, the temple of the temple of justice? And that's where we have found we have found ourselves, we have found ourselves in such a situation that bandits will go to the University of Abuja and they will kidnap the terrorists. That's the seat of government where you have all the paraphernalia of our security apparatus. But it's easier for for EFCC or for agents of the state to go after. They couldn't secure Abuja, but they could go and invade the house of a justice. And not a single person has been identified, and not a single um, um, action has been taken as to regards the consequences of that illegal action. By, by 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 agencies by agencies of, of, of the states. But what do we know? When someone when someone will invade the National Assembly and steal the miss and then till date we have not identified the people that stole the miss in the National Assembly. And then the perpetrators of that we rewarded them with the principal officers. So it's a society that rewards criminals. It is a society that rewards criminals and then and then and then we we we, we punish the the, the in, we punish, we punish um, people that 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 um, obey, obey obey the law. It's um, mind block boggling. I don't so know, even if that's the word uh, uh, word to use. And there's just the more, some things. The more you see, you could see. It's the, the, the more you look at it, the more, you can see that you could see Nigerian Nigerian trap in the net of bad, bad governance. I ask you this question: If election is not coming, what does Atiku do? What does Kwankwaso do? What policy alternative do they provide? Which conversation or engagement did they get into? Which statement do they release to address issues? Oh, then I get trapped in in where we'll, both. We we'll uh, have to end the, uh, where, uh, the conversation. You know, yeah. it is, you know, no, no, you know, no, you know, you know, you know. The more you just look at its characters and players, and you just wonder, why are we unfortunate to have found ourselves with this set of this set of charlatans parading themselves as political? Political leaders, they will just make a um, statement um, that that that, and we should call them. We should hold them accountable. We should not even give them. We should not give. Them. But a situation whereby um, is the survival of the fittest. Everybody wants to. Everybody wants to survive. So truth is truth is lost and truth is misplaced in this in the scheme of things. Right. Why would I? Ask Johnson, we would we'll have to wrap up here. Um, and, Thank you. Uh, Sorry. <laughs>
wish you a very and beautiful mercy. I hope you have mercy weekend ahead. That's all right. And I hope God will have mercy on everyone. Thank you. Thank you for <laughs> uh, being part of the conversation this morning. Thanks very much, J.D. Johnson. Have a great weekend ahead. It's a pleasure. All right. Uh, and, um, this is where, we, of course, we wrap up um, of the press for today.